Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another video on ECG. I am Dr. Wajish Shabir. I have done residency in cardiology and currently I am working as a registrar cardiology. If you are a cardiology resident, you will frequently receive call, call from ER for these changes on ECG. So you must know how to interpret these changes. Before starting the discussion on this ECG, I would like you to pause your video note down the findings and diagnosis on this ECG with yourself and at the end of the discussion compare your findings and diagnosis with what was discussed in this video. So let's start the discussion on this ECG. As you know the first thing which we look at on an ECG is rhythm. For rhythm we choose the two or rhythm strip. In this case, you can see at the bottom of ECG, there is a long lead. This long lead is lead 2 or it is also known as rhythm strip. We will use this lead for detection of rhythm. As you know from our previous videos, for rhythm to be sinus there should be an upright and prominent p wave in lead to our rhythm strip here in this case you can see that there is an evident upright and prominent p wave before qrs complex and this p wave is more prominent in lead v2 so this is our sinus rhythm once we are done with the rhythm the next thing which we C in ECG is heart rate. There are multiple methods to calculate heart rate and we use a simpler method in our videos. We select a QRS complex which lies on broad perpendicular line and then we calculate the large boxes between this QRS complex and next one as 300, 150, 100 and so on. So in this case, as you can see that heart rate is about 100 beats per minute. So this is our sinus tachycardia at rate of 100 beats per minute. After the rhythm, the next thing we see in ECG is axis. As you know, for axis, we look for the direction of QRS complex in lead 1 and lead AVF. In this case, in lead 1, you can see that the QRS complex is isoelectric. Similarly, in lead AVF, the direction of QRS complex is upwards. So, in this case, the axis is basically vertical which means the net axis of heart is directed inferiorly another prominent thing which we can note in this ecg especially in anterior chest, chest leads that is lead v2 lead v3 lead v4 lead v5 and lead v6 that there are prominent and tall t waves now, whenever you find prominent and tall T waves in chest leads, there are two differential diagnoses. One is hyperkalemia and second is ischemia. It is very important to differentiate between these two entities. So, to differentiate between uh, ischemia and hyperkalemia there are multiple things which we can see especially uh, symptoms on history are very important another differentiating point between these two entities is the, the T waves in case of hyperkalemia the T waves they are they, they have narrow base while in case of ischemia, the T waves, the hyperacute T waves will be broad.
another finding which you can see in this ecg is prolonged pr interval the pr interval is more than 5 small squares the presence of tall tented t wave with a prolonged pr interval it is very much suggestive of hyperkalemia rather than ischemia hopefully you would have liked our video for more videos kindly subscribe to this channel and stay tuned allah hafiz till next time